Well, for a start, the new Z is 50 kilograms lighter and has 16 more horsepower. And I love the design's new slashes and kicks that make the car look tighter and meaner. Just look at that swoopy profile and tell me you wouldn't like one. To test the car, we've come to somewhere very special. A place I've been keen to visit before it completely crumbles from view. This is Reims in northern France, which hosted the French Grand Prix back in the day. And it was right here back in 1953 that Britain's first ever world champion was involved in the so-called race of the century, when the dashing young Mike Hawthorne went head-to-head -head with the legendary Juan Manuel Fangio. The circuit was incredibly quick being little more than a triangle consisting of two very long straights connected by a section of frighteningly fast curves. You can no longer drive the whole circuit as this dusty loop ends into a dead end, but you can't help but marvel at the heroics of the drivers that used to rest on their monstrous machines through these sweeping corners on their skinny little tyres. Hawthorne and Fanjo battled for 60 laps of this five-mile circuit, dropping the lead on virtually every straight, with the young upstart occasionally looking across at his great hero and giving him a cheeky smile as they roared towards speeds of nearly 200 miles an hour with just little tiny fly screens to protect them from the elements. Now, we can't head towards that sort of speed, A, because we're on public roads, and B, because this Nissan is now limited to 155 miles an hour. But what I can appreciate is the extra bit of power this new 3.7-litre V6 has. It serves up a healthy 326 brake horsepower, which gets the car to 62 in just 5.4 seconds. But it's the engine's grunt that impresses most. Just tickle the throttle at any speed and you surge forward like a bullet train. Prices start at just under £27,000, which is 10 grand cheaper than a similarly powered BMW Z4 and 17000 less than the Porsche Cayman S. That sounds like incredible value, provided the car handles. To find out, we have to detour from the circuit and head for some bends. Despite all the improvements, the 370 actually doesn't feel quite as frisky or responsive as the 350 did. But that's not really a bad thing because there's definitely more overall grip. It's just that the balance seems to have grown up a bit, become a bit more refined. The nose, though, still points into the corner very nicely when you want it to. Once you start adding the power, the rear follows round. Pay 30 grand for the GT Pack version, and as well as things like heated seats and a six CD changer, you get synchro rev control. All my life I've heel and toed on down changes to match the engine revs. But now, by just pressing this little button, for the first time ever on a manual gearbox, there's an auto blip. We just brake, go for the gear lever. <laughs> go straight for second gear. It rips the first gear. That's fantastic! Oh, how Fangio and Hawthorne would have loved an auto blip for every time they braked at the end of those long straights and had to go down to the gearbox, double deep clutching and heel and towing to make sure they didn't burst the transmission or blow the engine up. That's brilliant. So, who won the race? Well, Mike Hawthorne, of course, by just one second after two hours and 45 minutes of racing. And to celebrate, he headed to the local hotel with a bottle of champagne in one hand and a pretty girl in the other. And I reckon Nissan should pop open the odd bottle of bubbly as well. Because from where I'm standing, this 370Z looks like a surefire winner.